So I thought we'd have some fun for once. Uh, once, I suppose. Which is that the Europeans, uh, the Europores, as they are lovely called, are yeah. having uh, wet dreams about electricity. Hopefully in the future, they'll be able to flick a switch and the light will still be on. <laughs> Who invented electricity? I don't know off the top of my head, actually. I assume it's us. Okay. <laughs> but... Uh, the Europores are getting the, the worst time imaginable in response to uh, their leader's utter incompetence in, uh, well, an energy policy for any period of time longer than two years. And uh, the UK is included in this as well. Well, you can see the bind that they're in. On one side, they really want a virtue signal against Russia. But on the other side, they're totally dependent on Russia if they want to live. That's the Germans. But uh, everyone yeah. else has their own problems, which have made this incredibly worse than it should have been, <laughs> even with that. Okay. So we'll just go through. We'll start off here just mentioning one of the newest things that's out on the website, of course, being the politics and philosophy of They Live. So you can go and check out the kind of people who uh, run They Live. And uh, somehow they're actually more intelligent than the people who currently run us. Yeah, there's a meme that goes around because in They Live, one of the uh, the revealed signs is get married and have children. And the, the caption that goes with this meme is, remember that the evil overlords in They Live are more humane than our current overlords. Yes, they are. And in fact, if we go to uh, the summation of german energy policy as it stands in the moment here you are <laughs> from wall street bets just being like he's got electricity oh <laughs> I, I think that's actually how pubs got founded originally is it well, i think it's the the house at the end of the road that still had loads of firewood and therefore oh, had right. heating in the winter right. and then you know they'd serve drinks and whatnot they'd be like oh to save energy let's just all go down there possibly Which, i don't know it's it's a rumor i've been told I, I i imagine it probably did originate something like that but there you have it back in germany they are going to move back to that staple yeah. and whoever has the power has the women that's how it goes. <laughs> we go to the next one here, though, because, of course, it's just let's enjoy ourselves once more, being the fact yeah. that, uh, of course, Donald Trump was right. I, I mean, and the, the look at the arrogant, smug looks on their faces. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're German, put a euro in the piggy bank for <laughs> Trump was right. But uh, let's listen to this clip of now this trying to mock Trump back in the day. Germany's reaction to Trump's inaccurate claim that... Inaccurate claim. so inaccurate let's laugh about it look at the arrogance in these yeah. <coughs> it's not accurate and highly less meeting said uh, msnbc It's beautiful, isn't it? The glorious golden era of Trump is radiating yeah. from only a few years ago. But the absolute, these... Sorry, Karen. Because it's, it's bad enough, those Germans, whoever they were, yeah. at the UN, sitting there laughing about it, like, oh, pff, what an idiot. Yeah. Like, you know nothing. But it's also <laughs> now this, you know, the left yeah. is putting that together, playing the little stupid music, being like, oh, look at the stupid American man yeah. know, that we put in charge. Look how silly he is, yeah. trying to lecture big old brained Europeans. Like, yeah. Germans. Yeah. How do you think that was going to go? We've been right about everything for at least about 100 years, haven't they? Now this. <laughs> you know, they make brilliant strategical plans. Anyway, moving on, because uh, it is. <laughs> I mean, that's just, just continual just failure after failure. And everyone's like, yeah, but Germany. Well, I see this from the Remainers. Yeah. Can't, why can't we run our country like Germany? It's like, why would you want to? They've got a good track record. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are you looking at and saying this is the golden age of modern yeah. technological development? I think probably the only things I will compliment the Germans on as being there a few times is their train system does work better than ours, but that well, is literally I, it. I, I talked to John about this this morning, actually, premium podcast coming, and apparently their trains are not that good. Uh, well, that's not my experience being there. Right. <laughs> but we'll go forward on this, just the energy crisis. You see Crabman here doing some fantastic work of yeah, just yeah. listing a whole bunch of it. And this is one small coffee shop's energy bill going from uh, 2,482 euros to around nine grand. Jesus. Oh, yeah, Trump was just so wrong. He was just yeah. so wrong. I think, did he say that was uh, the, the, the monthly bill as well? Yeah. But look at the look at the guy with the little Ukrainian flag in his bio. No, dude, you're doing this for Western liberal democracy. This is your <laughs> sacrifice. That that is one of the humors, which is the individual who runs this cafe. It's like glory to Ukraine, slava Ukraina, and it's you know okay, good, but then you know, yeah, uh, <laughs> you wanted this. That's that's part of the deal, and mm. uh, I I'm I'm hope you're 
are happy to deal with it, mm. let's say. But this is not just, of course, Europeans. Uh, includes the British. If, if you go back, please, John, yeah. and then we can just scroll through Crabman's thread. Because Crabman has done a fantastic job of just of just listing story after story of family-run uh, businesses yeah. being destroyed overnight because of all of this. I mean, that one there. My mum owns a small cafe in Leicester. Her electricity bill has just jumped from 10 grand to 55 grand. That's absurd. That's in pounds, so... Uh, I mean, that, I, I don't know what you know what the deal is there, but it can't possibly just be market forces. It, it largely is, unfortunately. Five times more expensive. I didn't. How are we reliant on Russian energy? Um, not entirely, but we use a lot of gas to generate electricity. It's our biggest source. Yeah, but so. I thought we got a very small percentage of things from Russia. But then it's the global economy. Like, where mm. do you buy from? Because if everyone's buying from everyone else, then well, price well, go up. We just don't sell to foreigners. Yeah, that's uh, also something you might have thought, but uh, there's a whole bunch of other problems. Because if they go through, they just keep scrolling. There's, there's more of these the, the horror stories. There's one in here saying, arrived at work tonight to be told, we might have to shut down shop. Last week, the electricity bill came in 10 times dearer. Today, the gas came in from 900 quid to 10 grand. Jesus. Psst, just okay. And there are, there are loads of these. I mean, if you just yeah. give it a scroll, John, because there's just the number and number, I just want to demonstrate. I mean, I love someone yeah, here yeah. saying, plug closure warning, my energy bill went from 35 grand. Sorry. From thirteen grand to thirty-five, uh, there's just everyone's. I mean, these are big businesses, so you know they're running through electricity, but they they can't really do that anymore. Yeah. And the increase in prices you'd have to for your goods to sell at your cafe. I mean, no one's gonna pay five quid for a sausage roll. No. So, nah. Like, like if if I was running a cafe and I was getting these kinds of bills, I mean, especially after going through COVID and hemorrhaging money over that, yeah. I, I can't blame anyone for just being like, all right, I'm done. But I'm yeah. just I'm just gonna cut my losses for now because this the industry just doesn't work anymore. Well, looks, but it's something you actually hear about when you speak to people from Belarus because of how poor things over there. Yeah, is that everyone just cooks at home? Like people don't go out to restaurants and stuff because mm. it's just too expensive and uh, looking more alike. We're gonna be going into there. Mm. Well, I wanted to mention just in my own life, uh, my bill went up forty percent in April Jeez. for electricity, and then in October they've already told me. Well, they told me in April it'll go up forty percent, but now the government raised it to eighty percent. It can go up by so. Yay. I mean, everyone gets it. And if we go to the next source here, we can just see the, you know, this is the British uh, uh, national grid as mm. it gets updated. So that's the current at the moment. But if you scroll down to just like the yearly one, it just shows you, you know, for the last month, for the last year, you know, where is your electricity come from as a nation? And as you can see it there, the big orange there, that's uh, gas. And then there's the green bit, which is mm. wind and a little bit of solar. And then nuclear and then biomass at the top which left. Which one's nuclear? Nuclear is the blue, which... Um, should be a lot more. Yeah, it's uh, the only one that's actually reliable as well in the graphs. Yeah. Like, well, I'm actually going to cover this in a minute in the next segment. Yeah, there's just huge it, problems, of course, with wind because if it stops blowing. Well, it's, it's just literally the power source of the future and we're not using it to its full capacity and it's annoying. Yeah. If you go to the next link here, you're going to see uh, Crab Man just mentioning that the pensioners are just effed. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. This is pensions here. Nearly three quarters of all state pensions will be swallowed up by the energy bill alone. Mad. So, um... Rip, I, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, maybe. I, I long term, you know, something in Afghanistan. You always saw the silver lining, everything. It's like if there was no food, it'd be like, oh, I've got more money. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, yeah, you know, your, your grandma not be able to pay her energy bills, but maybe, you know, silver lining. British society will start having uh, houses of multi generations again. I don't know. Well, yeah. <laughs> just try to spin it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How else am I meant to do? And if we go to the next one here, you've got these articles endlessly trying to portray that it's the electricity companies who are just stealing all the money. Mm -hmm. Like all of their bills are going up, and they're like, eh, "We're not actually paying anything, so we're just just stealing cash." Mm. They, they mention here that the uh, gas producers and electricity generators may make excess profits totaling 170 billion pounds over the next two years, according to the Treasury. Well, that's what I mean. It can't just be market forces if they're making record profits. But that's the thing; it's it's not really that much because once you divide it by the amount of companies in over two years, right. it's like okay. Because uh, again, this is coming from the Treasury, mm. are announcing that they want to just to have a windfall tax on them, so they just want money. Like, they're putting out this narrative to make money. I'd rather if they just cap the amount I have to pay the companies, to be honest. You could also do that, but then if the company isn't making any money, just turn off the supply, mm. which is their response. Because if you go to the next one here, there's the Office of Gas and Electricity Markets who just say, uh, no, yeah. uh, we're not making money. Like, this this narrative just doesn't seem to be true. And again, I'm not an expert on any of this. I just have to look at what the data is and present it as mm. such. Uh, one thing they could immediately do is the VAT in green levies. Yeah. There's, that is entirely within the government's purview. It is uh, green levies unnecessary. Uh, VAT mm. also unnecessary, especially at this time in yeah. the electricity market. 
Uh, but they don't do anything about that. Instead, they want to take more of that profit share, which, um, hmm. okay. I mean, it's not really a way of helping, actually. Because, I mean, if you're the companies as well, you just put up prices in response. It's just, no. hmm. Logic is not going to be there. Let's deal with that. But if we get to the, uh, just someone who does know about all the energy markets, if we track out tra trading economics, they just have loads of really good information, as you can see from the explanations there. I mean, this is the graph of electricity prices in the UK, hmm. which um, is strong and stable. Uh, and then the, <laughs> <laughs> for people listening, it's just like, you know, basically the same for yeah. years. And then now just eh, on through the roof. Oh, that's mad. Enjoyable. But they uh, they mention here just the, the reasoning, if, if you uh, scroll back up there, which is that uh, the, the one thing to keep in mind as well, these graphs I'm going to show you, they're all one month behind. So that point, right. that max point. That's should, going up. That, yeah. yeah, that's already higher yeah. than it shows as well. But they say in here, natural gas flows into Europe have drastically fallen due to tightened supplies from major exporter Russia amid consistent accusations from the West that the Kremlin is weaponizing energy. So yes, it's a war. Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know what this weird phrasing is. Did you expect them not to leverage their own position? Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I, how can the Russians do this? It's like, yeah. Dude, we're literally supplying their enemy. Of course they think yeah. we're at war with them. It's It, it is. It's a yeah. cold war with them. It's a proxy aspect. war with them. That's proxy war. Is. Correct. Yeah. But they say, on top of that, heavy maintenance activity in major export in Norway and nuclear outages from top European producer France compounded supply woes, which is something to keep in mind, which is uh, part of this is the French's prop. And uh, the French's fault get, gets even worse. Oh, yeah. When you look at the French. If you go to the next one here, here's the French graph, which is even worse than ours. So there you have it. It's now, I'm no expert expensive. on French energy, but don't they have dozens of nuclear power plants? Yeah, I mean, everyone thought the French would be fine yeah. because they've actually done the smart thing. Yeah. If you go to the next image here, we can see France's energy. And you see after yeah. Chernobyl, they were like, oh, actually, a nuclear, good idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, we, you laugh, but they weren't wrong. <laughs> no, they weren't wrong. And, Just uh, nuclear not run by the Soviets is a good idea. Yeah, a huge uh, source of nuclear. Uh, they're still using a significant amount of gas there. Sure, sure. But it's small, especially compared yeah. to Britain. It's like, like half our supply. Like a third of their economy is nuclear. Yeah. And, you know, they, they, they should have been sat here like kings of Europe, exporting yeah. electricity at ridiculous prices and making rakes of cash yeah. to the, the Italians, the Germans, to us, the Spaniards. Instead, they're French. They effed it up. Because <laughs> they say, if you go back to the trading economics graph there, uh, explaining as to why France messed it up so bad, France surpassed the uh, 1,000 euro per megawatt hour for the first time ever after Electricity de France extended shutdowns of several key nuclear reactors due to corrosion problems while drought curbed hydroelectric production. 70% right. of their electricity in France comes from 56 reactors, but 32 of them are offline for maintenance. Okay, well, I mean, at least, I mean, they can make the argument, well, look, the maintenance was necessary, so we didn't have a choice. I don't know how necessary it was. But either way, it's just, how bad do you have to be? It's like, really, now? Like, now is the moment you decide to turn off more than half your reactors? I mean, I'm not <laughs> saying it's wise. I'm just saying at least you could make the argument, right? Yeah, you could. But then again, I would make the argument that if you're French, if you're not French, <laughs> you would have dealt with this sooner. Because, yeah. of, you know, something like this might happen. And then you might be screwed. <laughs> You'd think they'd have a yearly one reactor a year gets taken off, gets maintained, then yeah. next year it's the next one, but whatever. But I can't even blame them. I, I've mentioned yeah. before, Theresa May made the big brain decision. Of uh, the the question was asked, we had huge gas reserves lying around apparently, mm. and uh, she decided to sell them all because it was like, well, you know, you have to pay for storage. Oh so, wow, well, yeah. I mean, if it's costing us money to have all these resources, yeah. I mean, this is a very big concern of. <laughs> I can't say that straight face. <laughs> anyway, so apparently she was worried <laughs> about the money it was costing to have all this gas lying around because you know people were like, oh, we might need it for a rainy day, and she was like, you know, we live in an on-demand economy. Oh god, if, just order more, idiots. So she sold them. <laughs> Uh, what are we going to do? Be in a proxy war with Russia? <laughs> <laughs> it gets worse for the French because uh, France was once. 2017 was more innocent time, was it? Yeah. Was, yeah. was a power exporter. Uh, they've now switched to being a power importer because of this incompetence. Oh God. Intensifying the entire squeeze on all of the energy supplies of the European continent. Do we know how long they're expected to be offline for maintenance for? I don't know. Uh, I, I imagine you, whoever you think, like, is in charge of that EDF is sweating bullets. Yeah, because you think the French government is trying to write, pour money into it until it's fixed. 
24 now. hour shifts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Get it done in a month or whatever it takes, right? You know? oh, God, that won't work. They're French. They'll just go on strike for two months. Well, yeah, of course. So, they will. But uh, Germany, even more effed, it seems. <laughs> Obviously. Than, than the French, because uh, their graph, again, looking uh, nice and healthy. Yep. As usual, uh, they say in here, power prices have been on the rise this year, tracking a surge in natural gas cost that has more than quadrupled, as the war in Ukraine disrupted gas flows from Russia to Germany, because the Germans decided they would be relying on Russian gas directly. The war in Ukraine disrupted gas flows. No, it didn't, actually. Hmm. It was your response to the war in Ukraine that disrupted the gas flows. You could argue, but they weren't going to do anything else but but support Ukraine. Germany has done that ever since the Maidan uh, revolution, or protests, or whatever the term is. And, well... If you were going to be a big supporter of Ukrainian independence, you probably would have taken Donald Trump's advice of not being tied to the Russian government yeah. through energy policy. But Germany has an aversion to nuclear power, doesn't it? Yeah, an ideological one. Yeah. So uh, the Russians have apparently now cut gas flows through Nord Stream 1's pipeline, citing maintenance work, which uh, is totally the case. Uh, trust us. We're very honest and honest Russians. Da, to- maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> Make things even worse. A heat wave in Europe, low wind speeds, falling water levels among the Rhine, and strong demand due to high temperatures have also disrupted the power market so the Germans could have the worst possible of all the worlds taking place. So, I mean, this is the thing of uh, multiple levels of, mm. of stuff going on. It's, mm. it's not as simple as just Ukraine. Yeah. It, it largely is for the Germans. But then for the French, the big thing is incompetence. <laughs> <laughs> and then for the English, it's just, you know, it's idiots. Also incompetence, actually. <laughs> yes. Oh, we live in an on demand world. I'm, just, like, I'm never going to get over that. Stupidity. <laughs> so stupid. Yeah. So besides acts of God, we also have acts of the French who have made it even worse for the Germans because the, the French are not, not sufficient with killing everyone on nuclear. They also decided to just stop paying their bills to the Russians. And the Russians were like, well, I'm not going to give you any more gas, you idiot. <laughs> This is a headline. Gazprom tightens gas squeeze on France energy. Oh, right, okay. Uh, the reason for this is lack of payment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cite this when I don't pay my bills. <laughs> <laughs> you say I'm ethnically French. So. <laughs> in a statement, Gazprom said energy had not paid in full for July's delivery of gas. And uh, under Russian law, they literally can't give France any more gas until they pay the bill. Like Which is act- fair. It's actually a law in Russia that it's illegal for a Russian company to keep supplying resources to a foreign country that hasn't paid their bills for one contractual period. I mean, that's totally sensible. You know, entirely normal. <laughs> <laughs> not to mention they're at war, so you think there's more yeah. you know, political skullduggery. Yeah, but yeah. apparently not. The skullduggery is the French just haven't paid the goddamn bill. So <laughs> the, the French aren't even largely reliant on Russian gas. I mean, they mentioned in this yeah. article, like, it's hugely fallen. And they're still just not paying it. It's like... <laughs> assholes there's, there's also an acts of greta thunberg as well yes yes this is obviously an aspect of german policy and british policy but of course sweden is also on the warpath thing being that you know she came oh, from there sweden shut down nuclear power plants as well yeah i i, I very love big brained so uh thanks to greta thunberg salutes in the chat for that child hero her demonization of nuclear power, her native Sweden, has shut down its nuclear power plants and is now burning oil for electricity. I still understand why you would demonize nuclear power. Because they're idiots. I, I, yeah. I hate to go on about this. If you click on the left one here, it's just Greta Thunberg's stupid tweet about nukes. But when I did a... Uh, I can't what? remember what the project was called in college. But yeah. I was doing it on nuclear f- fusion. Le- uh, sorry, yeah, go on. But it, you know the difference between fusion and fusion. So, uh, splitting and combining. Right? Yes. So fission is the one that, you know, you split and you make uh, radioactive waste. Fusion, there is no radioactive waste whatsoever, except mm. like some tritium, but this is just not a problem of 13 years. I mean, it's just beautiful. Yeah. And there was a project in that in Southern France that literally everyone and their mum is paying for because yeah. everyone wants the rights once it's done to yeah. be able to do that yeah. because it's, it's huge money. Greenpeace turned up and protested the project, citing that there would be nuclear waste. And it was like, you, they literally won't. That's literally the opposite. But you also... It's the most environmentally friendly form of energy. Yeah, it's also the holy grail of all energy policy yeah. that we've been pursuing for another 50 years, bro, trust me. Yeah. There's like Greenpeace, do not care about facts. None of these people care about facts. Don't bother listening to them, except Sweden did. And if you go to the next image, the results are that the... Uh, Sorry, the next image on that tweet, please, John. Then you can see the results are that the uh, yeah Swedish oil-fed Brilliant. power plant is, is now polluting back into the water. Because the, the Germans <laughs> had the same thing. They shut down all their nuclear power plants. Didn't have enough energy, so now they're back to coal power plants. So it's very environmental, you good, retards. Good jobs. Acts of Greta Thunberg there. Yeah. If you go to the next one here, I did I did just think, it would be interesting to see how this changes, though. Because you best remember this. This is a map of uh, everyone's favourite importer. So who is importing the most 
who from. Right. So you can see, basically, all of Europe is just like, yeah, German goods, please. Yeah. But if the Germans can't pay for electricity, I don't know how they're going to build their cars. That's a great question. So <laughs> I, just, I am interested to see what the hell comes out of all that. Speaking of cars, yeah. did a few calculations. So it costs about... Can't help but, no, the Russia imports from China more than anywhere else. Yeah, uh, the China's mm. bitch. Uh, so uh, if you drive a car in the UK, just yeah. looking online, doing the calculations, it's about £40 pounds in petrol to drive 200 miles on oh, average, okay. just the average miles per gallon. Whereas if you charged an electric vehicle right now, you would actually be spending £27, pounds, which isn't hugely different. Like, you're saving 32% on fuel. But I mean, that's something. If, if it continues to go up as well, like, you eventually will actually, in just, uh, I think, a year at this rate, <laughs> I think less than a year, it will actually match petrol prices. So driving an electric vehicle will be more expensive just in terms of fuel. It's hardly cheaper to get the electric vehicle in the first place. Yeah, speaking of that, mm. the Amerifats are having the same problem. Oh, yeah. Here we go, Californians. Yeah. August 24, California bans the sale of gasoline-powered cars. Six days later, yeah. Californians are told to avoid charging their electric vehicles due to electricity shortages. I'll talk about this in my segment. Yeah, actually. I have. I haven't got the reasoning as to why uh, oh, California why. is this dumb. I know, I know why. I don't know how they messed this up, but they I have know, it. I know exactly why. But I'll the, explain shortly. There's some other details in here that just makes me laugh, which mm. is that of California's 30 million motor vehicles, only two percent are even electric. Yeah, and, <laughs> a, and a portion of them are going to be hybrid. Yeah, and even that, they're saying you can't charge. Trust me. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, California is in dire straits. If they did want to do it, they'd actually need, uh, what was it, 17 gigawatts of electric uh, power to be generated. And they also mentioned here that they did decide to just shut down the nuclear power plant recently. Ah, actually. They generate 2.3. No, 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 I'll, I'll correct you on that. Yeah, but anyway, he's just mentioning in here, Michael, yeah. here. But the funniest thing is I did see from Tim Paul, which is, you may be, you know, horrified by all this, but the worst <laughs> part, if you're American, is that you just can't change your thermostat now in California, apparently. Yeah. Sorry, Colorado here. Just you've been told, you know, yeah, you're not allowed to because of climate change or electricity shortages. Yeah. And I love as Tim puts it, it's 2030. Your house is 99 degrees and you can't put the AC on because the governor just declares an emergency. You can't charge your car because governor. Just, you have no freedom whatsoever. Yeah. There you have it. Land of the free. Can't even turn on the AC. If you appreciated that segment or the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the premium interviews we do, this one with uh, mad lad Miles Routledge. If you want to follow what else I'm putting out, you can follow me on Getter at at Callum on Getter. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>